Hi, this is JP Morgan, and today on the Slanted Lands, we're shooting out at a little airplane museum in Utah. We're going to take a look at a cost effective way to shoot vintage portraits. I have been shooting a portrait series I call Time Period for a couple of years now. It's an art series that allows me to look back at how people lived their lives in past times. I really love history and this gives me an opportunity to live in a different time period if it's only just for a few hours. I go in and research the time period and create portraits that I feel look like they were taken by me as if I was there with my camera in that time period. It's really about the people and what they were feeling at that time. It's really a fun process but can be a very expensive one. Shooting different time periods mean that you need to have props, wardrobe, and locations that fit that time. This is going to drive the cost way up if you're not really careful. So here's how I've been able to overcome that cost factor. Number one, I look for museums that have props, whether they're large props or small props. In this case, the Air Museum specialized in World War II and had two planes in their collection. They also had a great selection of clothing and hand props that people had donated to the museum. Some of that clothing they allowed us to use. You know, this solved the props and location problem. It's kind of a tricky process so when you're shooting with the museum, some are going to allow you to use things and some are not. It's usually smaller museums that are funded by individuals that really give you this kind of access. A lot of times I do however make a donation to the museum to help cover the cost, but I try to keep that as reasonable as possible. Number two, I look for reenactor groups to bring into this process. You know, there's groups all over this nation that recreate different time periods. They buy and they recreate, they sew the clothing so that they look period correct I try to find these people and bring them in the shoot. This gives me great access to clothing that's been recreated for the time period and looks a little more new than some of the old things that people have had in a trunk for a long, long time. Remember, this is not about old. This is about seeing people the way they were in that time period. So reenactor and LARPer groups actually are a great source for this kind of work. Number three, I do use wardrobe houses from LA at times. You know, when we shot on the OSS Constitution, Jolene pulled all the master and commander wardrobe she could find in LA to take back with us. That really helped out, but it was pretty expensive. We try not to do that very often. But in a pinch, you can rent the wardrobe you need from wardrobe houses like Warner Brothers here in Los Angeles. They'll ship it to you. Number four, for the location, I use a place where the props are located. You know, I don't have any choice when you have a plane or a ship. You kind of have to shoot it where it's at. In the case of the Pioneer shots, we did that shot out on their property. They had 360 acres of just virgin land. It looks just like the Pioneers would have seen it as they came across in their wagons. So it was really great to shoot out there on one of those grassy hillsides. For the planes, I use a lot of smoke to cover up things I don't want to see in the background. I also fill the frame with the plane or the wagon or the prop in the foreground. And then I get slightly down so I'm looking up into the sky and that gets rid of most of the stuff I don't want to see. So there's a very simple formula for shooting these kinds of vintage portraits. For today's vintage portrait, I wanted to look at a World War II fighter pilot. You know, the plane in the background is a Texas trainer. So he's just learning how to fly. In World War II, we lost more pilots in flight training than in combat. It was a sped up process. It was kind of fast and very dangerous. So I wanted to show the man who's feeling the courage to be able to get in that airplane and try to learn how to fly it. We pulled the airplane onto the tarmac outside the hangar and I placed it so the sun would come in from camera left. I wanted to see the mountains in the background. Well, you know what? It started to snow and we weren't seeing anything in the background. After a while, the snow kind of started to break up, the clouds started to break up. We could start to see the mountains and start to see the clouds. Here's our first shot after the snow stop. This is just with the ambient light we had on set. I'm shooting at f4 and 1 25th of a second. The ISO is set at 100. I get a good ambient reading here, which allows the airplane to fall just out of focus a little bit in the background. I like that look. Using the Baja B4, I'm going to add an octodome with a grid from camera left. I love these Bajas. You know, just the battery portability makes them so easy to use. I'm not carrying extra power around or having to run cords. It just makes them very easy to use on location. I then added a second Baja B4 as a rim light on the camera right side. It's a little broad in this image on his face, but we pushed it around a little bit so it was more of a rim and not so much on the front of his face. So that became our lighting setup for most of the things we did that day. We did use a reflector occasionally when the sun was too harsh to take the sun off from his face, and that allowed our key light and our rim to keep doing their job without too much fill on his face. Here's some of the final shots before editing. We also had a couple there. We did her up in some great vintage hair and clothing. Did some shots of her with the airplane, a couple with the airplane, and then the guy alone. In the editing process, Jolene cleaned up their eyes and did a little bit of work on the faces, but then she added a nice curves adjustment to increase the contrast. 
Then she added a gradient map adjustment layer, turned the opacity down to 50% to desaturate the color just a little bit. That makes it look a little more vintage. The final step for the vintage color look was to add a sepia photo filter. Then she did a high pass layer just to sharpen the image a bit. Here's some of the final images with the editing. It was a lot of fun to be transported back to World War II for just a few hours to be able to see the airplane, to feel the clothing of the people, to be able to do some vintage portraits. So there's a quick look at a fine art series we call Time Period and the process we use to get there. So keep those cameras rolling, keep on clicking.